And now we're going to look at the anatomy of a web page. First I need to connect to my VPN because I'm off campus. So I'm going to use the Cisco VPN and the connect client. And now I need to click on the background for our finder and I'm going to do command N for new window. And I'm going to do command K to connect to my disk space. And we're waiting for it to connect. There we go. And I'm going to go to my IMS222 folder and I'm going to right click on sample page.htm and open it up with text wrangler. And this is the web page that we're going to work on today. The first line has doc type HTML. It can be uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. It could be like that. Uh, but we're going to leave the HTML in there. Line 2 has HTML language equals EN, which stands for English. And lines 3 through 13 contain the head. Line 4 has a fav icon. That's just a picture that's made to show at the top of a tab. So let's open up a web browser. And I think I have a window open. There it is. And I'm going to do a new window. And you can see when I go to my university homepage, I've got an H there. That's my fav icon. If I go to kirkhopkins.com, you can see I have a little nothing. They put a little paper there because I don't have anything. But if I click on Jesus Lives, you'll see that I have a G, which stands for Jesus Lives. So in those cases, I made a fave icon. I'm going to go ahead and close that window and just say that if you don't have a fave icon, you don't need that line. But if you do, then you would want to leave it. So lines 5 through 10 all talk about cache and screen size. Most of this is dealing with caching, which is telling your HTML web browser not to save stuff. Um, what that means is if I put a new image out there, um, it's going to reload the page and pull in everything every time. Uh, makes uh, setting up your web page and testing a lot easier. Line 11 has my title. Uh, I'm going to change the title to something else, put some Z's after it. I'm going to hit Command S for saving it, Command Tab to go over to my web browser, Command R to reload it, and you can see up here I have Kirk's sample page ZZZ. Now I don't really like that, so I'm going to Command Tab. I'm going to get rid of the ZZZ. I'm going to add AAA to the beginning, save it, Tab, reload, and you can see it's changed to AAA. This is the way that we want to edit our web pages. Now I really don't want AAA, so I'm going to delete it and save that. Come back over here and take a peek at it, and voila, it changed. Let's keep going. Line 12 talks about an external style sheet. Um, that name can be whatever you want it to be. Um, so I'm going to change it to uh, ZZ and save it and we're going to reload this and hey it all changed. Why did it change? It changed because that document doesn't exist. So I am going to I'm going to rename it to Kirk's great external style sheet. And we're going to see that it still doesn't work. Well, why doesn't it work? It's because Kirk's great external style sheet doesn't exist. So I'm going to rename that document to Kirk's Great External Style Sheet and reload over here and voila, I've got things working again. If you don't have a style sheet, an external style sheet, you would not have line 12. There's a little code here that I learned along the way that if you put a question mark and then something after it and you change that Thing that's after it, it works like caching except for a style sheet. So if you're doing a lot of coding for uh, CSS, you're going to want to keep changing that. And I will show you a little trick later in the game 
on how you can change that automatically with PHP. Line 13 is the closing for the head. Lines 14 through 18 is for internal styling. It's an internal style sheet, um, which is different than the external style sheet. And here I've got a class called whatever I want, and I reference it down here. Again, you don't need to have any specific name for that. Let's call it uh, anything. And then I'm gonna switch this down here to anything. And when I reload the page, we're not gonna see any problems, no changes, because it all matches. If I call that oops, See how that changed right there? I'm gonna go ahead and change the class to anything oops. And division in bright green, it's not really what it is, but we'll leave that anyway. And look, it's an obnoxious pink. So let's, let's uh, figure out a nice green color instead of obnoxious pink. And to do that, I'm gonna pull up a web browser and I'm gonna do a search for web color picker. There's lots of them out there. Let's go ahead and use W3Schools. And there, that's a pretty decent green. Maybe a little bit darker. And we'll just grab that code right there. And then I'm gonna change this this is the red value, the green value, and the blue value. Oops, the blue value. And the numbers go from 0 to F. 0 is all the way off, F is all the way on. So the lower that number is, the darker it is. You don't really need to know that, other than that's how it, they figure out what the colors are. Let's go ahead and reload our document. And it says division and bright green using a class called this class with internal styling, which is a lie. So I'll say dark green using a class called anything oops. And when I reload that page, now I've got that text showing differently on the screen. Anything oops is kind of a weird class name, so I'm gonna do a copy, a find, paste, and I'm gonna replace that on the whole document with uh, a, a class. And I'm gonna save that, and reload it, and it changed there, it changed everywhere. Excellent. Uh, next we have a header, and I said this is my header. That's where you would normally put your navigation if you have a whole website. Right now we just have a web page, um, so it's not super duper necessary, but I left it in there just to show you where it would go. Next we have a body, and the body goes all the way down here, and we close the HTML at the very end of the document. You saw we opened it almost at the very beginning. So all that stuff is in the body. You could put the footer outside of the body if you wanted. Um, I believe both is acceptable. Um, if I reload my page, you'll see that nothing changes. So I'm gonna undo that because I kind of like it to be in the body for some reason. And let's go through some HTML codes here. I've got an H1 which is, says header one. And let's change those words. Change those words. And it says header one, change those words. Why in the world is that in bright blue? There's no styling here. Oh wait, we've got an external style sheet called Kirk's Great External Style Sheet. I'm going to look for an H1. That's taking too long. So I'm going to do a search of H1. That one normalizes it. 
and this one sets it. So let's change that bright blue to bright red, which is my favorite thing to use whenever I'm looking to figure out where I'm at on a page. Changing code. Uh-oh, it didn't change. Oh, I remember why. Um, we talked about this already. What we want to do is we want to change that number so that it goes and updates the CSS and doesn't use the cached version. And now we have bright red. I'm going to remove the change those words. Save. Tab. Reload. Tab. And I'm back over to my code. Next I've got a paragraph which starts there and ends down on line 40. And I've got a bold tag. That's the opening bold. That's the closing bold. Here's a break. I've got hello, how are you? I could say this is a break. Line feed, carriage return. That's from typewriter days. And you can see where it changed right there. I could put multiple breaks. I could do a break like this. That's completely acceptable. I personally think that's a lot of wasted space. And there are better ways to do it than break, 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 break. Um, I'm personally not a fan of a break like that with the space slash in there. I, I prefer that way. But either is acceptable. Uh, next, I have a center tag. It says, these words will show on the page. Um, let's say, wow. And I saved it. We're going to go look over it. it. said, this, these words, these are the words that will show on the page. I'm going to reload, and it says, wow. Next, I've got a div, which is short for division. And this div is using a style of class of a class. So it's actually calling this internal styling up here. We already talked about that. The next one I have a div with inline styling, not internal styles, but in, inline. And here I've got a margin of 2M and a color of FF0000, which we said was red. Let's make it um, FF00FF. And we'll do um, AAA. I'll do that sometimes to see where I'm at on the screen. And there it is. That is one bright pink color. Um, so let's do blue. And let's change that. And let's make the margin really big. And that is really big. And with the margin, you could do pixels or M's or percentages. Um, there are different codes that may or may not be able to be used. Um, I just kind of try them um, because I can't remember what they all are. But I like M's for margins. Next, I have an unnumbered list. Here I closed my list items with a slash li. Down here I did not. Either way is acceptable. I personally prefer no closing the list item because uh, it just takes up more characters. Um, and when I get big programs, uh, I don't really want to see all that extra stuff. So, But again, either way is acceptable. Next I have an ordered list which has numbers in it. And if we look at it, you can see my unnumbered list. Oops, there we go. And here's my ordered list, and it doesn't have any numbers on it. I must be doing something on my style sheet for an ordered list to goof it up. Nope. I don't know why I don't have numbers, but I'm honestly not going to worry about it right now. Or will I? 
I'm going to remove my style sheet and see if that changes anything. It does. So I have some styling in the style sheet that's taking away the numbers. And I bet it's at the very top. And it is. Let's see if I get rid of that. And then I get rid of that. So I'm calling that style sheet again. And I'm going to increment that by one so that I get a new style sheet. And that did not fix the problem. This is going to take a while to look for OLs. There we go. OL and the UL are together, and I do not want that. So I'm going to get rid of the OL. And now I have my numbers. Yay! Finally, we close our paragraph that we mentioned earlier. Here's the opening and the closing of the paragraph. And I've got a footer, and you could put whatever you want in that footer. And I'm closing the body and closing the HTML. There you have it, the anatomy of a web page.